So post-normal science recognizes the possibility of transcending perspective to a value-free objectivity. That's not to say we shouldn't go towards an objectivity. That's totally not the case. What we should move is sort of towards a more common perspective that where we can get integrate multiple different uh, scientists, all from different disciplines, and try and find some sort of common factual perspective. We also need to integrate the framework with stakeholders. So stakeholders need to understand the framework. If they don't understand it, they'll become sceptical of the whole problem and will not accept the results from the models that we develop. So there needs to be an integration from stakeholders, an integration from scientists, um, an integration between stakeholders themselves. And then if we can really genuinely achieve that, we get um, integrated water, water resource management. And this, from the FAO, from the UN, from a lot of top scientists, water scientists, it seems the greatest promise towards sustaining ecosystem services, this approach. So, but the problem is, it's rhetoric. There's not enough genuine assessment tools that can really believe in integration. Ultimately, it ends up focusing on a certain perspective of the analyst or of the scientist. So it's not allowing the integration of the ecologist, with the economist, with the chemist, it's ultimately an integration of one perspective of the analyst and one perspective. And that, and that, and that I have to take some responsibility because I, I am one perspective. But we need to find tools that at least start integrating these perspectives together, both scientists and stakeholders. I believe um, Exism Services Index could be a start. Previously we've looked at non-market valuation and it's certainly a very viable tool for looking at valuing Exism Services. It, and as Mark Morrison knows it, it is both costly and time consuming and that's part of the problem that we face. So why not also, possibly in, together, but more realistically, um, to, to focus on some sort of standardised units of account and therefore the, of the development of an ecosystem services index. And it could be as simple as a weighted um, some sort of problem. So here's an example of the multi-criteria analysis of sort of approach, looking at sort of an idea of developing a utility index or an ecosystem services index. I've also broken it down into irrigation and other water supplies for the for one of the ecosystem services called water supply. And we can start doing this pairwise comparison between these ecosystem services to look at the trade-offs amongst different stakeholders and then form ultimately an ecosystem services index for the various ecosystem services actually supplied by river systems. And here's an example of 21 stakeholder representatives. I use the representatives, not the actual stakeholder population, but I think that's reasonably justified because these people have the interests of their stakeholders. And I average them. This is just some, some data. It does show for Canterbury Rivers that water supply is considered one of the key some services that is preferred um, by the various stakeholders put together. But we also can start looking at conflict. Recognising this conflict between the different stakeholder preferences, we can start using statistical tools to, to compare and contrast both within differences of preferences between these groups and between the groups in, in, in two group differences of, in terms of preferential weights to determine which ecosystem services we have problems with between the different groups. Once we can identify, right, that's the ecosystem service that we've got a problem with, that is, is the, the information we need to know to lead to dialogue towards compromising solutions amongst the various stakeholders to effectively resolve the conflict or a conflict resolution approach. In addition, we need to get scientists around. Here's some factors that here's some factors that were um, the abiotic and biotic factors involved in the production of these services or the ecological processes and some of the other factors involved in that first conceptual diagram I showed you. And we, we've shown a whole, we put up, developed a whole bunch of these factors from the literature and from a few analytical models we developed ourselves. And then we got scientists to develop some connections to indicate the complex interactions between these various different factors. We were able to use some graph analysis, which is in the process of doing now, both in a sort of static approach and a simulated approach, to generate utility scores of these ecosystem services provided. So now we've got the preferential weights and the utility scores 
these utilities was generated by, or the delivery of these things was generated by a bunch of scientists. At the moment, we've got a data for five. So it is actually possible to collect data from ecologists. It is actually possible to collect data from um, social scientists if the framework is appropriate that they can understand. And it's also the framework is understandable by stakeholders, so they can see where the problem is and they can make sense of it so that they can actually um, utilise the information for, um, for, for policy making. And the important part, looking at is this water storage problem sustainable? Well, we can start forming this ecosystem service index that includes the knowledge of scientists and the preferences of stakeholders looking at both the contradictions in their weights that they've given and in um, other aspects, just look at uh, weak and strong sustainability. Weak and sustainability could be indicated by a non-declining ecosystem service index with and without a water storage project. And strong sustainability could look at some of those factors and see if they are um, meeting certain targets. So one of the factors might have been native fish population. Is that going up or down over time? And then we can sort of say, well, is that meeting with the target that the Canary Water Management Strategy has set, such as the known decline? And then we can give an indication of a strong sustainability as well as the weak sustainability. And so I believe, as a conclusion, that the key factors are for integrated water resource management is divide, developing a framework that allows multiple um, disciplines in terms of scientists and stakeholders from different perspectives and preferences to be able to um, come together, can see the entire process in its entirety, and can lead to integration, um, to lead to, towards um, integrated water resource management, and ultimately can then go about systematic assessment of <coughs> the most wickedest of problems uh, in terms of water storage, because it's an irreversible, one-off project that we do not have historical information to know about. So it really comes down to what we think right now and what we think for the future. Thank you.